Mm. Are you saying for Hellraisers? If they can tie yeah, it? Yeah, for Hellraisers. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, like, uh, do you... Because I think the good Willow combos are just not going to be that great in the yep. game, right? So... <sighs> I can certainly feel like if you go tired though, like doesn't Timber just absolutely obliterate like another hero now throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, out of the strength course, I think he's the only one that can somewhat okay. hold the zone. Okay. What do you feel like just the? Team I think fight now you combo? can't. I think now you can't tide. The Grimstroke yeah, is. Yeah, not with the Grimstroke. No, true. the Phantom is like the hard counter to tide. Like, what offlaner do you pick? I, I feel like they're honestly without options. And <sighs> you can't like consider like a ranged offlaner now because you have a Dark Willow. Like there's no Viper, there's no Venom, yeah. nothing crazy Just like stick that. stick with they... Mars. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think that was the best pick that they had left. It's like sure that you would, you're playing it to Timber's hand, but it's good into Wraith King. Like it's... Yeah. It, you have high physical damage to clear Skellies. Wraith King relatively low armor. It's good combo play. They have lots of team fight, as we were mentioning, for Hellraisers, so that's the one thing they've got going. VP doesn't really have nearly as much fight, but they have much more lane prowess, I would say, right now. Mm -hmm. they, they also have long team fights, right? Which is what you want to yeah. do with Wraith King, not like the burst of, like, we bring him down, but rather a lot of zone out, a lot of uh, damage reduction with a Kunkka. What, what, what mm -hmm. carry, or you, now I'm more assuming uh, Kunkka is mid, right? So what carries are you seeing here for Hellraisers? What's the final I, piece of that? I was mentioning the AM. I'm, I'm actually, that's a good band. I think that was probably one of the better ones that Hellraisers okay. actually had left. Even though I, I still really don't like AM in this meta, I think it fits their lineup because they have really good fight and they have lots of good ways to make space for something like that. This 1v5 hero that comes on later. But it's mm -hmm. there's just not many that you really want to lane versus Timber. <laughs> what was the other one that we said? It was AM and Luna, Luna yeah. Yeah, Luna's still okay, right? Mm-hmm. I know Aries looking into his spot. notes. Uh, they're in <laughs> such a hard spot, man. I'm like, come on. I'm, I'm trying to find a hero. They're, they're pro players for a reason. They'll find something that'll work, but I don't know. I'm I I'm kind of sold on the troll, if I'm honest with you. Fuck that. I actually You're trolled on the troll? Pick. What about, yeah. like... It's like, what do they want to go for now, too? It's like, at what point do they want him to come online? Because then it's like PL as well. Do you want to do something Ooh. like that? Yeah. I can see that actually. Grimstroke can be a bit of a nuisance, right? So can Timber in the early game. But if you can hold out. They're going to be a nuisance. Yeah, they're going to be annoying anyway, though, right? It's all about holding out until you can. Yeah, exactly. But mm -hmm. hmm. What, are, what are we looking for VP? Because they have run the Grimstroke Shaman. They did it in, I think, game one. And I do feel like they Very maybe much. need a little bit more control. Uh, also pushing potential. Rating can early, but I think. Like, this is where I want to see, like, do they really value the Shaman, or was it just for those previous strategies? I think Shaman is great, honestly. They've Shaman's hype. Shaman. Yeah. Big yeah. fan of Shaman for a very long time, honestly. <laughs> One of my favorite yeah. heroes. I mean, it, you saw it yesterday, right, Ares, where, like, they Shaman halfway through the draft, and they're like, oh, we can go control now and play with that late game carry, or we can go hyper push. You don't know. Shaman fits yeah. both, and that's, that's super scary in a draft. And... Like, I haven't seen the Shaman Mars, Mars matchup before, but I'm just thinking, like, you can kind of anchor the arena in your own way. Like, you just drop Serpent Wards down, because Hellraisers want to just get in the arena, blow a hero mm -hmm. up, but maybe with Serpent Wards, it, like, makes you consider twice. I, I don't know. I'm just, like, theory crafting how it could work, but, like, right. they've they've proven they really like the hero. Yeah. Y you zone out the zone out is the idea, yeah. right? Like, yeah. with the Serpent Wards. I, I like that. You know, I'm fight fire with fire. <laughs> Well, I, I guess the issue is, though, if you go Shaman, like, he needs to play the lane, and Timber doesn't want that. Like, you want a four that's able to move across the map. You're a greedy man. Like, you want as much as you can get. So, like, oh. that's where Earthshakers are considerations, but I don't, I don't... That hero is not very good. So, just some hero like that. Looks it like dominated there's... South South America, I want to say. Earthshaker mm -hmm. actually came back in full force. They do ban, they ban it. Okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And they ban out Invoker, actually, on VP, so they think this Kanka might go back safe lane. <laughs> Ooh, the oh. DP5, I'm pretty sure. And they're just going to take a Lena. Okay. So, so it is Kunkka carry. Kunk carry. All right. Hello, my best. And it's my Death Prophet mid. Okay, that is wild. And it's Yamich as a on? queen. So lots of flexibility. So I think VP picked the Death Prophet because they thought the Conquer was going to go mid because they're like, there's no way they put Conquer into Timber. Right. So I think that's why they put the they picked the DP for that and to help push towers and they were lacking a little bit of team fight. Like I think Hellraisers that's an advantage with Willow, Mars, and Conquer. So they felt like they needed some way to amp that area up. 
But I mean, Hellraiser is like, screw the bad matchup. Let's just put the Conker versus the Timber. What could go wrong? Uh, it's they it's got... Conker versus Timber Co-op, though. Hmm. They do have they do have lots of uh. The thing is, they have lots of ways to fight, lots of control. Uh, uh -huh. it's a pretty well-rounded lineup, to be quite honest with you. And good burst versus GPK, who doesn't have a save behind him. True. So that's so, the one thing I am seeing. I think they do have good ways to be able to fight this time. I just think the lanes could be a little scary. I think DM could just... He could just get this become this out-of-control Timbersaw, but I do see a way for them to fight back pretty hard and burst down these heroes. Like, if Death Prophet goes to set up for a push, Mars sets up, and they'll just kill her. Aries, do you see this path as well? Um... Wait, were you giving the favor to at least the path for Hellraisers? Sorry, was, was that what you're saying? Yeah, you're saying kinda... there's a there's a chance for Hellraisers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think Lena actually takes over this game, so I okay. believe in Rabel. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. we'll see Let's if the Hell if Hellraisers could take <laughs> game two. Aries was saying, "I'm gonna out you here." He was saying, "There's a game three. He was saying behind the scenes, there's gonna be a game three. Will he be right, or will he ultimately cast his curse, Hellraisers?" <laughs> and then we could tell him in the interview. We're gonna have to see as we go into game two between VP and Hellraisers. Everything on the line if they want us to go to that grand final. Your casters are Aries and Font. Thank you, Arvo. All right, fuck it. Here we go. Come on. I like, Let's go. I was saying, I, I need, I want a game three. I want a game three. I, we saw Rabel absolutely pop off yesterday. His Mars, his OD, he's in a really, really comfort hero. Like, his Lina is top three, I think, on Rabel. And I think as the game goes on, like, Silver's Edge potential, a win condition, you know, Conquer could go for, like, the water park for control, Rabel having, like, Silver's Edge, Satanic maybe a little bit of damage. You just rip through the timber, you blow up the DP. I I'm, I'm hoping here. I, I, I think there's definitely possibilities. They just have, they have so much overwhelming fight and control. So I definitely can see the possibility. I, I just can also still see the possibility of DM getting a free lane completely, taking over the top side. And then he's got good core matchup versus Mars and Kunkka. Lina still will be a problem, but I will see. I don't know. I, I I think it's I think it's fairly even, honestly, the drafts. I think it's gonna be really fun fights that we get out because HR, you know, they're gonna look to take fights. Like this is one of the biggest team fight lineups I think I've ever seen. Kunkka, Mars, Willow. So can we like look at the Conquer in an aspect where this is a carry that can get kicked out of lane early and still be okay in the jungle? Like, is that something that we're maybe considering? What for the Kunkka that he gets pushed out? Yeah, like, well, he's a hero that can farm the jungle very early. So even though it's into a Timber, they felt like, okay, there were, like, no carry matchups that we could put comfortably into the Timber that would have also been okay to farm the jungle early. But the Conker can do that. Yeah, I guess you can. You just don't really want to. <laughs> you don't want to just keep your safe lane right there. It's not like he's a Wraith King. He clears decently fast, but he doesn't clear as fast as these Wraith Kings, these PLs that are, like, the, the best jungle hitters. Your PA, right? Sure, his cleave is there if you can efficiently throw them down, but... So it looks like they tried to get a first blood at the start. They actually had the Grimstroke starting top on the side of VP. They already didn't have a, enough of an advantage here with the Timber versus the Conquer. They're like, let's, let's bully Watson even more. I mean, we saw that yesterday with Look at damage, though. Mars. Yeah, he's stuck. I mean, he's leveled up the Dagger, so it's gonna be a lot of damage. I mean, he's able to play around with the Fairy Fire. Be a great start to the lane if Hellraiser are able to secure the first blood, but you know, I mean, just, just able to step out of danger. That was real close. He stepped way too far up versus two three hundred, like three hundred five, three fifteen. Bottom though. <laughs> That's an unexpected kill with a Shadow Realm level one. Very nicely done. Gilgo picking up. It looks like he got the solo experience as well. Limitless was still in the lane if I caught that correctly. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have. This is nice for Gilgo. What, what what has he got coming on the courier? What do you prioritize? Uh, a lot of regional stick. Like so. Yeah, stick and region. It's huge though. I mean, bottom, look at the last hits already. Wraith King has three. Limitless is at nine. They've done a great job of controlling lane. And it's even going to push out now. So Pure, he is in a really weird spot where he just can't get any last hits. Might Does he get even... the kill? He's in armor. Dude. He's in uh, tower armor, so he should be okay. But yeah, He's got sick charges too, so Pure is going to be all right. Uh, how do we feel like mid's going to fare, though, with Rabel's Lina versus the, the Death Prophet? Is this one of the better matchups to go into the DP? Farm versus farm. <laughs> Very thrilling. They both have their small camps available, so it's who out who out efficiency is the other one, who gets a stack off or something, and do they have any uh, supports check runes? I don't think we're going to have supports check runes because of how much battling we have in this lane. 
I guess then the, the question is, do you feel like Hellraisers have supports that are able to combat this early exism that we're going to see? I think, yeah. Yeah, they have they, they fight around it. They don't have de the de-pushing supports. They have the battling supports instead. So okay. they're just going to probably, like, as soon as six hits, probably around this, like, six minute, the, the power rune, we'll see the supports move then. But pre, pre before that, I don't want to see them move because these lanes look good. Mars free farm. As we mentioned, Wraith King can't really walk up to get last hits because of lane positioning. So he's still at six. So it's looking pretty good so far for HR. At least Yokota did get the, the pull off. So was it a double? I think it was only a single. But he has denied a decent amount. So we'll see if that's able to reset for pure. But he's getting beat down he, from Limitless. It looks like he got a half pull, actually. It looks like it was like one or two creeps and then two slid by. Oh, do they get the Mars Spear? He's closing the distance. Limitless has already got boots. It's like Shadow Realm and maybe the spear damage. Shikori is playing off that stick HP and it will be okay. That's close. I mean, pure, this is not easy for the Wraith King. But as we said, he is one of those heroes that can recover a little better than I feel like the Kunkka can. And Watson is dealing with the same amount of bullying and annoyance, even though he's got a Bane behind him. Malady, I think, is starting to realize he's like, I can't even like help you up here. Like Timber just doesn't, uh, Timber doesn't care about anything. Every time Watson steps up, he eats a whirling death and a dagger. So, what do you think the game plan is then for Melody in a lane like this? Are you playing for pulls? Are you playing for stacks? I think he should start getting ready to play for the stacks and checking the runes. So, I, like he just checked the top water rune, which was great. And then I think at six minutes, it's going to be the same thing. Go try to secure the power rune for Rebel. Because you just can't help Watson. Sure. Right, there we go. Finally starting to put some aggressive maneuvers onto Limitless. Brought to a very low health pool, but Gilgo, of course, with that first blood, plenty of resources still available for the Mars. He's going to make sure he pops those stat items into the backpack as well. So might give a, some breathing room to Pure as they can now look to reset the equilibrium. Yeah, much better positioning. He recovers. He It's just Wraith King's an easier hero to recover as a safe lane carry because you have built-in sustain and you have, you know, you have your buddies. Your buddies are always going to do the work for you at some point too. So yeah, Watson, it's going to be quite a tough recovery for him, it feels like. It's also going to be interesting to see how the Queen of Pain position 4 can have some impact in a game like this. I mean, has been a hero that's hotly contested throughout the past couple of months. You know, teams have tried to experiment, putting her into different roles. Bottom action's continuing to break up as Gilga does get that last little bit of damage thanks to the Shadow Realm. So the Dark Willy already at level four. Very nicely done, but you're back on the Queen of Pain. We've just seen a lot of flex from her. Like uh, they've yeah. tried to put her as a position three. Some people have attempted the position one. You know, if it's a bad mid matchup, it's always exciting to see like when a hero has a lot of versatility. Yeah, I think this, I mean, the shard, I think, changes a lot about the hero because you can look and you can be like, oh my god, they don't have ways to break free Fiend's Grip later on, but then you have a Queen of Pain with a shard, blinks on top of Bane and stops Fiend's Grip or something like that. There's there's just so many cool little things now that have, you know, you can do in, with moving heroes around from core to support because Dota's just ever-changing, so it's great. It does feel like there maybe one of his weaknesses is just based off experience. Is what I'm keeping tabs on this. Dark Willow... I was get too much distance away through the Shadow Realm, but the Bramble is going to block off the uh, avenue for Pure to continue on for more. I mean, even it looked like Rabel was considering stepping on over to provide some assistance as well. As... It's going to be okay. So yeah, all the side lanes, not really getting too many kills, but just a, a bunch of damage being dealt at the moment. Do you feel like there's level timings that we're going to see come out shortly where the kills will start to occur? All right, well, I, th I think it all just depends on if, like, who actually ended up getting the power rune? Was it, uh, it was just a rebel illusion rune? Okay. Yep. Um, I think they can they can just look to go whenever GPK makes the call. I don't think it's really dependent on levels right now. I think right now it's sure. just, like, lanes are looking cool. Wraith King now is probably going to start going to jungle, so now it's we're going to see VP make more moves around. And we'll probably see HR move the Mars to mid as soon as we see Exorcism come out. I think that's probably the biggest one when he gets six. I think this is going to be the exciting thing as well, because we've only seen three games from Virtus Pro, but all of those drafts have been really off the back of just this tempo controlling, really grouping up to take towers and just run over the game. And now it's just a really different outlook from them. Just a bunch yeah. of meta heroes. So some that aren't as well, of course, but it deemed with a comfy timber. 
This one's different because this one I don't feel like they're in a rush ever. They have a Wraith King versus a Kunkka carry. So like, the later the game goes, I feel like Wraith King is extremely happy. Like if he's able to just sit back and farm and it's not actually H HR taking fights or doing much of anything, Wraith King is going to outscale this game. That is the, the scary thing. I mean, once you're able to get towards the later stages, his talents as well is ridiculous, especially the uh, the 20 that can just increase his farming speed throughout the river, Ray Bull. We might see that first X, so if he feels like the fight's going to continue to break out. Even Watson's Watson's here. thinking about pivoting over, however. Tries to drop the combination. Do they have enough burst potential to get rid of the Death Prophet? Yes, sir, they do. GPK loses his life, and now they'll turn over to Yamich as well, as this is huge for Hellraisers. You cancel out the potential of that first Exo, and you get a double for Rabel. Great, uh, beautiful rotation from Watson. Super unexpected. He just hit six, and he actually just, like, walks from top through the river to mid, and that's everything. We mentioned the, the concerns for the Death Prophet a bit in the game is the burst, and right there we saw it. They have more than enough. I mean, now this gives them a lot of breathing room as well. Like, Death Prophets really rely on converting Exos early into objectives. Very similar to, like, a Dragon Knight. And now you've got about, what, uh, 100 seconds now with kind of free breathing room where you can look to get some more levels, some more items, and you see how you can now set yourself up for that next Exo. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, Rebel, this is massive for him. He's about to be level 10 already on this Lina. He has bots, so he's going to be all over the map. He can actually look to maybe set up on stuff on perhaps even DM if they want to bring, like, you know, two, three heroes when cut when boat is up. I think the Lina could even look to start making moves up there. This is a huge first move from HR. Watson's Watson, a though? bit of trouble. I have to be really fancy with the Dukes here, but... DM gets into a position where he's able to land the abilities perfectly, and Watson's going to end up dropping them. Might still get a kill nonetheless, though, as Melody able to catch out just a, a Queen of Pain with the expedition to the jungle. As Rebel's starting to definitely pick up that farm, killing Spree now for the Lina. She's top of the net worth with the Boots of Travels already completed. He, I, I think he was actually going to do the move, too. Like, I think Watson needed to be a little more careful because they were just going to have the, rotate, the rotation come up there, but it does get taken out from DM. And even though, like we mentioned, you know, the exorcism was unsuccessful in mid from VP, they're always going to have DM putting pressure on top. So now it's HR has to make a choice. You know, once this next exo comes out is, do we go for the Timbersaw top? Probably not. We're going to go for the Death Prophet, so. You know, we've been putting a lot of emphasis on Watson and his catch up, but Pure had a rough lane as well. And I mean, he's already yeah. third in net worth. Just love and life at the moment. 76 last hits and well Wraith on King his things. way towards the armlet. Wraith King things exactly. What a hero. Yep. Yep, he's got he's got his Skelly Bros. Just follow the Skelly Bros, and they'll do everything for you. Yeah, his armlet's pretty much done. So yeah, full recovery. And he didn't die. That's actually the other important thing. thing. Sure, they um, they lost the Grimstroke. They lost him twice in the laning phase. But the Wraith King actually played it really smart. Where he didn't step up. I see so many times, like a carry player is like sees two creeps and he steps up to go for them when his, his like support is pulling and he dies for it. Pure did not. Do that. <laughs> Ah, yes, it's it's a greedy carry mentality. Come on, Foggy. Me see creep, me hit creep. I won't lost it. Yeah, wait, it's at their tower? Yeah, let me just hit the creep at their tower and then get chased <laughs> all the way to mine, right? <laughs> I mean, that just, I guess, shows the composure. And, I mean, Pure is a very, very young uh, person as well. I believe only 18 years old. And he, you build that experience over time. This is really his first big dota team i think he started in 2018 and three years later he's already he calibrated a 2000 mmr somehow he's already 11k that's, so that's my crazy. guy can play dota at a ridiculous level i love hearing those type of stories i remember when it's like v2 and as well right he was like a yep. 1k mmr player and then he became like a 12k mmr carry player here we go though he's young in that second exo and it feels like Hellraisers. I mean, you're starting to bring the forces. It's on Maybe DM, they though. can aim down DM, but, I mean, he does have the hood, so the chain control has to be perfect to make sure there's no opportunity to get that defensive item off. And DM can now turn it back around. GPK's in a little bit of trouble off the back of the Fiend's group. DM's going to try and do what he can to disrupt this. It might not be enough, though. The damage is lacking, oh! and GPK gets the health back. Now they turn on the Conquer. Yamich is showing up for the team fight as well. Limitless, he's going to join his two fellow brothers in the grave. It's Virtus Pro. They're not done just yet. They're going to turn their attention to Gilgir as well. The Orch chats are out from GPK. X he's <laughs> fueling himself this game. DM gets a triple, and VP. 
so comfortable with the position they're in now. Oh, oh my god, I thought that was someone else's arcane boost for a second. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh god. Oh, it almost looked okay. But Death Prop they got outside of the ring. The Marzolt actually only catches DM, and then the spear catches him too. And I feel like from that point forward, VP is so happy. However, GPK actually gets caught a bit deep from the grip. Does get bailed out from his teammates, though. That was a pretty close fight for HR to win, but ends up going the side of VP because of DM just catching the spear. He's the one that got initiated on. So Limitless, little, a little bit botched because he did end up missing the other target, but can't blame him for that. I struggle to see how they killed DM without, without Silver's Edge, I, th I think now. I, I guess maybe... I think you had level 2 Laguna for that fight, but I don't see where they're going to get any more damage before that. Yeah. Too low. I mean, that's something you have to consider now. Yeah, as well as going to go down, because Dim's going to put himself in a position to be jumped. So if you're dish chucking out all your abilities onto the Timber, then that just leaves a free fight for the Death Prophet. Our Rinses are still sweeping over. They want a little bit of revenge. Phantom Spray is going to be a nuisance for Limitless, but still the rest of the team have the stuns to get rid of the Queen of Pain. And, and now also it looks like the Grimshaw is going to drop as well. Watson, some much needed kills for the Conquer. Yeah, good pickups. But I, I think they just, they, they have to ignore DM. I think mm -hmm. he, unless you catch him with zero stacks and he's very isolated, I don't think you can really commit for kills onto him at this point. He's too tanky. And he has Yules now, so he's got even more protection versus like the X combos and X burst and boat. So... Have to catch this Death Prophet in the front if you're on the side of HR. And they do have Blink, so Limitless. He's got easier methods of getting on top of GPK now. See what the angle's gonna be though. Wraith King definitely not the person they wanna jump. With how close he is to the Radiance territory. They can just TP in instantly for the second life, so they're gonna move top, but Deem is already evacuated away from the area, so it's gonna be uh, an off smoke for the boys on Hellraisers. While Wraith King just farms, so that's like always the, the scary thing. It's like Watson, sure he's getting his farm, but Wraith King, he's going to be able to pull ahead faster and faster with no pressure on him. HR mostly on their side of the map right now. Talk, talk to me about this uh, blink on, on Wraith King. What, what does he feel like he needs his early item instead of something like a Deso? I think just to get involved inside of fights, like they're, as we said, HR, they're going to look for team fights because they have a very well-rounded team fight lineup. I think he just wants to get involved. Okay. I, I always like Blink Armlet anyway. I think it's one of the better builds. I don't feel like you, you need to just sit back and AFK farm as this hero. You can get involved in fights and you're very strong. And his stun is really useful this game because they have Grimstroke. So if there's like a Soulbind situation, double stun. Melody? Damn your code is nearby. I, I wonder as well if the Blink, uh, just maybe getting a pick off on a support or two to initiate fights, they can lead it into Roche because you've got Exo level two now. Mid. Um, GPK, nice setup from Limitless. That's the way to start. Fiend's grip on the back line as well. Pure tries to jump in and provide some assistance, but GPK's already the been combo. given up, and now you've got the combo as well. Taking care of the first life. They've got this up for the boat. It's a little bit missed time, and now they're going to be cautious. They've used all their ability to try and blow up the Wraith King, so this will give a free fight to DM. He's trying to find the angle in, continuing to chase down Watson. So the Queen of Pain will claim the kill, and now they're eyeing up Gilgar as well. And Dark Willow doesn't look like he's going to get the kill on the Grimstroke, hoping and praying for a trade, but not the case as DM steps in, unstoppable streak for the Timber. That was that was pretty huge, to be honest, from Yamich. That Queen of Pain ult pushing, I think, what, it hits four or five heroes, pushing them back as the boat's coming through, gets his Wraith King out of there, makes the boat maybe miss, a little bit of mess-ups there coming out from HR, but... Another big one for VP. And oh! Oh. <laughs> That's unlucky. Why not him as well? Again, I don't think they get this kill without Silvers. Ray He's got a Sange going... now, too. So, status is just 2,100 HP almost. Uh oh. Okay, so Raybull's going MKB. So, I, I wonder if. I, I, of course, Silver's Edge is a very key item on Conker. So, I have to imagine Conk is just going to go for it after BKB. I guess so, yeah. It's also like, uh, MKB just gives you nice mix damage, right? Versus uh, Timber and the Wraith King. So he's just trying to find any type of solution to eventually kill DM. 
Smoke, if they can get a kill around this T1 tower, that should be an objective for Hellraisers. They'll use this time to drop a deep observe ward. They'll look to play off the back of that shortly for another team fight to break out, and it just looks like VP, they're content with losing the T1 with all that they're getting across the map. I mean, Pure's free farming. He's already got one of the Mithril Hammers into the Deso. Uh, they do see him. Reincarnation's still on cooldown. I think you need more. Oh, no, Rebel's nearby. That's a, no. that's a risky place to go with just two heroes, though. You might get the kill, but they might be able to just turn and kill both of you on the retreat. I think that might have been a... That's a good move to step back. Continue just farming up. Your lanes are in weird positions, so don't want to force a random move around triangle. The stage the seems, there. They seem to be very aware of the positioning uh, right now. Here, though, ring? he's going to run right in. Uh, the rest of the team is super disconnected. Starting to move towards the area, though. Let's see if they still want to blow him up. Uh, Melody's got the Fiend's Crypt to utilize. They're even thinking about dropping the Terrorize, too. So they won't have pure for the team fight, but still keep in mind all the abilities. So now Dean can just fly over the top, aiming down the supports, Bane's the target. The Sonic Wave gonna try and push back Rayble. Of course, it's not enough to burst him off the back of the BKB. But now with GPK as well, veering his forces into the middle of the fight. I mean, the Spirit's starting to rip apart Watson. It's like the Conk is able to reposition himself as well. So all in all, Hellraiser's pretty good. Two for one. Yeah, really solid. Just catching this Wraith King completely separated from his team. VP, they were setting up the smoke to go meet up to him, but HR made the move too quick. Caught him off guard. That ward paying off dividends immediately. And yeah, Exo's wasted. I think you smoked now, right? I mean, you're super close to BKB on Watson, maybe like a minute away. By then, yeah, you still have time with Exo on cooldown. Absolutely. I think they should look to smoke, get on top of him right now. Wraith King ult still on cooldown. No Exo. You've got a great window. No Sonic. They literally have nothing actually on VP, so definitely should look to smoke out. Where do you feel like is the angle for the smoke? Are they looking to maybe take a fight bottom, get some wards down, and then eventually that can set up for like a tier 2 push, or do they have to keep in mind about top? I think you want to set a vision bottom. Get get vision in the enemy jungle. And oh, almost catching the queen. Almost get themselves a nice pickoff, but not going to be the case. And now I think VP, they're aware of where HR is posturing. See. Limitless is not going to have a BKB by this stage. Rabel's pretty close to his Monkey they, King bar as well. They want to force this tower since those spells are on cooldown. See how, let's see how VP reacts. I don't think there's going to be any reactions. It's going to be... All right, everyone farm for the next few moments. Tower does get held decently from that glyph. They actually use a glyph of their own on the side of HR, so they don't have glyph for their top tower now. This is big though that Hellraisers get this tower without a trade. Whew. Okay. Because often we can kind of see that the T2 bottom can be traded for Roche. But the, the fact that VP, of course, is not in a position to do so. Maybe they're just waiting for Desso and Wraith King. But like you said, yeah, they're very content with the farm they're getting across the map. Yeah, it was just. That was a, that was a good move from HR. Just smart. Good awareness knowing everything was down since the XO ran in. It was wasted. Uh, these items are starting to come out though. VP double Kai Assange now done. DM as well as GPK. So now it's a little bit harder. Sure, they have all this stun and control that we talked about from HR, but that status resistance will definitely kick in. Bounty. Limitless and Rebel looking for a pickoff here. It's just a support co-op though, if they do get it. Radiant are scanning. See how quick Yamich is with the fingers. We're going to use the trees to make sure the Queen of Pain doesn't get that little bit of vision. Nicely Anticipate done. the move. And don't waste, they didn't waste anything. That's the important thing. No Laguna wasted, no ult wasted, it's just a clean kill. And now lane bottom is fully shoved out. So VP might have to actually go toward there to stop that push a bit. Tarizas do have a bit of issues though with the vision that Radiant have in their own jungle. Like three wards set up almost in a line protecting like the stairway to Roshan. And now Roshan's dead. With Deso and with Exorcism, no way that HR makes it in time. I mean, this is huge. They're going to get it for free. Die, they're still trying to move over, but Limitless has already used the blink, so there's no way he gets in the pit. Age is picked up on GPK. And I mean, I still feel like they can take a fight with Exxon cooldown. They are still moving over. It doesn't have the greatest mana pool for a fight if it does break out. It's, it's still scary. Like, 
thing about Death Prophet is not really just exorcism, especially once you start getting like your 15 talent, your 20 talent, your, you know, these talents are absolutely insane. I think Death Prophet might have one of the best ones, personally for me, some of them. Um, but yeah, now it's like, just your Crypt Swarm spam is insane in team fights. your Spirit Siphon too with Kaya Sanj. It's no joke. So yeah, I think it's hard. They're smoked looking for a catch or something, but committing to a full fight might still be pretty difficult. They're gonna run it to pure shortly. Oh, this could be big. The rest of the team, once again, are a little bit too far away to provide him some assistance. They'll use the arena on the first life, and Lena's gonna look to TP in as well. I mean, they, yeah, they're gonna kill him twice. Great the rest of the aren't even considering moving over. I mean, that's huge. Multiple times now. <laughs> I kind of jinxed him. I was speaking about before, you know, the composure, not overstepping out of the lane, you know, getting a couple loss hits and sacrificing his life for it, and you know, now he gets picked off multiple times. Well, you did, but you know what? You did say that Rebel, he's got the chance to own this game in 7 0 3, 300 last hits, level 18 Lena. He's well on his way to be able to carry this. Top of net worth by 3k. Having a phenomenal game again. And they're just continuing to try and play aggressive, though, even though they're into the ages. But like you said, still a lot available here for the Death Prophet. Ooh. Just with that Exo. Yoga! Don't be forced to use the Terrorize because the Spear and Bramble's off the mark. I mean, this is still Look something top. to consider. Bro just Wait, gets a, He oh. took out the entire tier two. Uh, oh, he's getting like dangerously big. Going for the AC next, so he's going to be able to have that extra physical reduction versus DP and Wraith King. No. You, you might be on. You might have been onto something. You said this Lena might be able to carry. It's definitely a possibility right now for HR. They are falling behind a bit on their other core on the Mars in particular. But this Lena is huge. <laughs> I think though in a game like this though, like all Limitless needs is Refresher, like BKB then Refresher. Because all you do is protect the Lena as best as you can, double Arena drop, make it difficult for the DP just to run into the fight. You, you have to rely on BKB, once that expires, you use Tidal Wave, you use Torrent Storm. Like I really believe Conquer doesn't go for the position one build this game, it's more like the position two water park. Because I think Lena is your damage, I think she's the win condition. I, I think I'd like that, yeah. He's got to go for the Silver Edge, as you were mentioning anyway, though, just to have that break, but... Yeah, I could definitely see him being that, because, yeah, Lina's yeah, going full right click. He's, he's just... He's super farmed. So with this Aegis, let's see if VP tries to force anything. They have two minutes. Exo's at the ready. Looks like it is going to be them trying to push this top tower. Glyph. On, actually going to be back up for the side of HR in about eight seconds. For Virtus Pro, like, who's the key component in a team fight that they have to bring down? I think it's more just they need to just protect themselves and keep this long duration team fight, right? Okay. I, I think it, like they don't really need to particularly target. If they can kill the Lena, of course, you know. But sure. I don't think Rebel is going to put himself in position to get taken out by this. They should be able to find their first tier two tower of the game. A couple of VP heroes are going to smoke up as well. Ogre's in a solid position to pop this. They're going to try and have pure on the Vanguard here, moving towards mid lane. Is I mean, Rebel, this is a big kill. He's still he's oh, deep. This is so great to hit the tier two tower. What do you know? He's got the haste and he oh he's gonna run in back in. They got the he's first done. It's a slither of duration, but it might be enough still. BKB. Haste I think she's Audi. Oh that was way too close. Oh, oh my god, Rebel is playing this so damn well though. He just forced a whole team reaction, gets away. They didn't get the chain stun off. Well, they only had that chain stun. That's the only thing they have left. And he gets away. AC almost done. Force huge reactions. This is and, yeah, just very tough. I mean, they have an angle level. now to to kill the timber. Like you've got Silver's Edge completed on Conquer, and you've wasted this exo. They only got a tier two. I think they would have been expecting a lot more out of that. Mm -hmm. VP still postured, looking to fight though. GPK is not quite 18, so it's still that level two ult. Maybe wants to hit 18 before he, they do look to commit a full fight. Does seem like that's going to be the case. He's running to the left. And Aegis is going to get reclaimed, but he's going to have Shiva's done too. So, some big pickups coming out for the side of VP. On HR, is the AC done? It's about to be. Like and it, doesn't, it looks like Watson's not going to water park, by the way. He is going Satanic next. Satanic, okay. Your Admiral is on board. Oh, you were kind of speaking about the... The fact that Virtus Pro really like these long drawn out fights, double reincarnation, Timber's mana pool, Exo as well. So is this maybe something is like considering with the Satanic? Maybe, I guess so. I just don't really see him being able to 
like stand toe to toe inside this death prophet exorcism i don't know i feel like maybe he might have just wanted to go for some type of just one shot burst as we were mentioning before but maybe just feeling like they're too tanky and he wants to actually be this hero that can stay inside the fight because these fights might last a long time so oh, it's gonna come down to who has this vision advantage i mean radio yeah. a lot of wards postured up top be how Raze is leading for the smoke though gpk does have the level 18 shivers as well pure not 18 at the moment Gonna look Ooh, the on the this time, Virtus Pro, they're set up to try and protect the Wraith King, but he's still getting melted as Rayful sitting on the high ground with the help of the MKB. Do they look to the Wraith King's second life? No, they're going to jump towards the back, GPK. and they obliterate GPK. They've got a big leaner issue. Rayful, too far, too much damage. Pure is gone as well. The mid lane Yamich will look to at least get a consolation prize as Melody's going to drop to the Sonic Wave. Watson's still looking to try and set up for a catch over. Back to all mid. Limitless, he has run into the Grim Stroke. He's disconnected from the team with the BKB on cooldown. They'll cut away his life thanks to DM's burst. Kinda ends up being not not totally even, but relatively. But we're seeing, I mean, Pure needs a BKB. He was actually so close to it before that fight happened, too. Just about 200 or 300 gold from having it. He gets initiated and just dies. He needs BKB. He is so weak without it. I, I thought he'd actually go with the BKB um, right after Blink rather than going for the Deso so he can just, since he went for the fighting build of this team, but... Sure. And now it's costing him a couple deaths. I mean, now you're in a position where Hellraise is, that they've got this net worth lead and... Mm -hmm. But do you look to make a play now? Again, because Exo's on cooldown, Raiden, right? they're more uh, the ones with, like, the longer cooldowns. Look at Rebel's bottle as well. So I, think that, I think HR could look to go for this again, yeah, for sure. Because you just saw how fast UPK dies in the fight. And, and that's definitely the advantage. I, I love this recognition from JPK. Blink queued up. It's not going to... What it does is just you jump the Lena and kind of force her not to have a free fight where she can stand her ground. Because it's you not going to make you beefy yeah. up, but yeah, you get on top of her so you can't necessar necessarily just continue to right-click freely. Yeah, because right now they're the ones kind of getting initiated on every time, so I would like to go for that. Yep. The rest of the Dyer nearby, trying to see if they want to step in to provide some assistance. Yamich actually going to blink super aggressively. Dakota's nearby as well. So by onto the Mars along with the Conquer, but the arena's going to give them at least a position to anchor the team fight. But look at, okay. look at Rainbow going to work. Double damage run in the arsenal. Now they're aiming down the Death Prophet as well. They won't have GPK for the team fight. Pure is still trying to do the best he can, but they'll just turn their attention to the Timber. He's going to get melted as well. Rabel's a man on a mission here to send this to a game three. He can continue to chase down the Grim Shrek. Look at the oh damage pulled in. Godlike streak for Rabel. And they are not done as Watson to the northern side. Even catch out another straggler. Four for one trade. GPK is just getting annihilated. He just gets beat down from so far away from this Lina and Roche spawns. 60 seconds from the Quab, 30 on. This is a free Roche, free shard. HR. Rebel in particular, just doing God's work. Beautiful fights. Who do you feel like is the, uh, the person to take the shard here? Definitely not the Lina. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to the Willow. I, I thought maybe Gilgard already bought it, but. That's I these are massive fights. It's just over and over again, VP, they can't they can't have Pure do anything. He's 0, 3, and 8 on this Wraith King. Hasn't had any success inside of a fight. And that was VP picking the fight themselves finally. Like every single time it's been HR actually starting the fight. This one VP, they ran in to start it themselves and just get Mollywopped. Another power rune for Rebel. Uh, they, this is what I think we saw them do really well versus Team Spirit, right? Where I think you brought it up where Rabel was getting power rune after power rune after power rune. He is just, I mean, he is doing, like, like I said, he's doing God's work. This is insane how well he's playing. His map awareness, the movements, like, the way he's pressuring by himself in some of these lanes as well is super good. And we've spoken a lot about how raises on the identity and how what's been able to get them to this position. It's really been off the back of Watson. You know, this hyper carry, they give a lot to him, but so far through the regional finals, it's been Rabel really just put taking it to a different notch and this just opens up the draft now like maybe watson can play like a little bit more of the the heroes that don't have to be that win condition actually give it to rabel i agree after watching mars and this lena now it's actually just it's crazy look at this arcane rune he's got a full daedalus tower is dropping in seconds all right well how do you start the fight now Lotus pro they've got the ultimates 
Inside the base as well, but Limitless are reloading. GPK's Wait, gone. GPK? It's just melted. They've already lost three. Pew is next as well, but I don't think there's going to be an escape. GG. They had enough. Fog, I mean, Rave wow. would just win absolute beast mode in this second game. In the last, what? I really Look at this guy. Wait a minute. In the last, like, what? Like, 10, 15 <laughs> minutes or so, it just feels like Rebel took over completely. GPK runs in and just dies over and over. They even start tipping now, and we've got a third game. You were right, Aries. Holy. There you go. Delina did it. I mean, remember as well that there was one fight early on where GPK just got away. He dropped the ore chat, the DX. He was feeling himself. But I tell you what, Rabel gets the last laugh in the second game. Yeah, they were always the ones getting these big jumps, right? Like, they're always initiating the fights, and Rebel's just like, this is the dream. I'm just sitting in the back, just auto-attacking as Lena. It's, yeah, really well played from Hellraisers. Great way to take the fights on their terms every single time. And VP, you know, DM, he's, he ends the game 8, 2, and 3, but he's just ignored. They didn't have to pay attention to him because they just ruined GPK. They ruined pure. Phenomenal stuff from HR. And now we are one game away of finding out who's going to be the first team to move over to the grand finals. We'll see you guys all shortly after a quick break.